Back here at Dwyer Arena for the Hockey Show on Purple Eagles Weekly and with two of the assistant coaches of the Niagara men's hockey team, Tim Madsen and Pat Olivetto, who coach together and played together as well. So you guys have seen quite a lot of each other over the course of your, uh, your hockey lives. Yeah, I was, uh, I was here first. I was, a, I was a sophomore when Tim came in as a freshman. And um, we moved, I moved out after sophomore year. He was able to move out after freshman year. We ended up going to the same apartment complex. So we've been around, to get, around each other for a while now. Yeah, Pat and I, Pat and I have, uh, we've been through a lot actually, uh, living with living by each other, playing together, both being captains here, which, which means a lot to both of us to be having been able to do that at our alma mater and, uh, and now coaching together. Uh, which we've always had a very good relationship and we've carried it through the years and kept in touch when we were in the same area or living together and now we're coaching together so it's it's great. I'll ask each of you about the other being that you're both captains could you see at that time that each of you had coaching in your future? I think so I think uh, one of our qualities when we played hockey we might not have been the fastest or the biggest or the strongest but we both thought the game really well and I think that turns over into coaching very easily so I saw Tim was a very smart player and so I think that led to coaching very easily for him. I would say the same with Pat. Um, you know, we had a couple guys who were captains when we played here, Sean Benavolio, uh, a couple other guys that, that were maybe weren't quite as vocal, but like when we played together, like it seemed in the locker room in between periods, Pat was always one of the vocal players, and, and, and I would think that I was a little vocal too. Um, and and I, th I, could, I, we, I think you could tell. I think you could tell that uh, we understood the game and, and, and we maybe had a future in, in coaching. How would you think that affects the players that you guys currently have? To have guys that were here, that were on you know, the same ice surface, doing the same things, you know, they're following the same exact path. Do you think that, that resonates with the guys? I think it does. I, I think they hear us talk about having played here and, and have, had, having won here, and, uh, and they see that we played here and we wanted to come back and work at Niagara, and that, that Niagara means a lot to us. And we were both, they know we were captains here. They know we had some success here as players. And, I, and they see that we wanted to come back here. And they, they know that we love Niagara, and that's why we're here. And we want that passion to rub off onto them and for them to know how fortunate they are to be at Niagara. Yeah, I, I agree with him. And I think uh, luckily we have banners up with our pictures on it. They see that. And we reiterate how much fun we had here, not only getting to know guys playing hockey, but uh, as they see, we're still really good friends. Um, they see a lot of alumni coming back to see us and hang out with us, and we bring them into the team. So they know how much Niagara means to us and how much fun we had. So they kind of want to have what we have, we think. And we don't try to, we try to reiterate it wasn't all about hockey, and it's about, about what happens off the ice and how many friends you make and all that stuff. So I think they see that. Talking a lot of hockey here, it's a, it's a hockey episode, and you know, we, we're looking at the banners and talked about this with Chris Noonan. There's a lot of pressure on, on this year. Every class has been able to get to a tournament. It's every four years, and this is the time. The time is now for, for this year's class in order to keep that tradition going. So, you know, as the second seed in the tournament, first round by, when you look at it, what do you see? Well, come playoff time, no matter what seed you are, there's going to be pressure on you. Um, having had some success the second half of the year and, and finishing in the top two, I think the guys the guys know, especially the senior class, like you said, they. I don't think we've talked about it at all. Uh, that that uh, about the, the pressure being put on them to be the only senior class to not make it. I think they know that. I don't think it needs to be said. But no matter what seed you are, I think there's there's pressure. Yeah, I think they realize uh, these guys have been through a lot. They actually played in a game their freshman year. They had a chance to win the championship, lost to Alabama Huntsville, so they knew that was a missed opportunity. But they been on a championship run type run before, so I think they know what it takes. And I think us finishing strong 10-2-2 two and two in our last 14, I think they realize that it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So I think these guys are understand that, and they're uh, leading the team the way they should be, especially being seniors and being on, this, being on a run like this before. What's been the biggest difference, the 10-2-2 two two finish? And it's not just 10-2-2 two and, two and, and the finish from January 1st on, but you went to Christmas break actually playing really well also. So when, when did it switch? Like, was there a moment in the season where you felt like something you could tell it was starting to happen for you guys? I think um, after the Sacred Heart tie, we, um, Sacred Hearts last in our, or came in second last in our league. Um, we had them 3-1. Uh, going into the third period, we tied 3-3, and we gave up a point there. And unfortunately, it might have been that point that we needed to come into tie for first place. But after that, I think the guys really did some soul searching, 
us as a coaching staff did some soul searching. So we, we talked about things and we said we things got to change around here. And I think they really bought in, and I think that was the, the moment of the of the season that changed. And uh, luckily, uh, we got a little healthier at that point too. We got a couple guys back like Jeff Han and Dan Baco. So I think that helped too. So yeah, that, I think uh, to add on to that, the second half of the year after after that Sacred Heart weekend and then after Christmas, we played. We were home pretty much the whole second half versus being on the road the whole first half with a young team. I think being on the road uh, a lot in the first half brought our team together, let the guys hang out a lot. Uh, it's just the boys, no, uh, no distractions. Uh, and then the second half, we're home almost the whole time when we went on that little run when we had seven wins in a row, and then now we just finished that little run with a 10-2-2 two two record. So I think it all comes together. And one last question. You've got a first round by, you don't know who your opponent is. So does that mean, will you scout a few teams, or you really just kind of look at your own game and what it is that maybe you want to fix in your own game heading to uh, the first round for you guys? Well, the good news is we've seen every team play. We've played against every team. We have video on every team, um, and we'll, we'll be scouting their games this weekend on, online. And uh, you, um, with the way our video system works, we, we burn their games from the past weekend. So we'll have, we'll have all the information we need. We're familiar with most teams. We know kind of the scenarios of what could happen coming in this weekend. So we're confident we'll be prepared. Yeah, we'll look after. We'll look at the games against RIT and try to make adjustments where we need to make them in uh, throughout our team. But uh, for the most part, we'll just sit back and relax, watch the games, and uh, start Sunday after the games are over. We'll look really into scouting. Tim does most of the sc scouting reports for us for the other team, so he'll get right on that, and I'll help out as much as I can and do different things with that. So, Pat Olivetto, Tim Madsen, the assistant coaches here, the men's hockey team.